happy to see so many familiar faces, and I think I know most all of you. And we're so glad you've come out tonight to the library. Um, if you haven't met me, I'm Becky Scott. I work here at the library. Um, but I lay claim to fame to Kathy Comer because we taught together for many years at Covington High School and shared some laughs, some tears, a few curse words every now and then, that sort of thing. Don't tell that. <laughs> Don't, that's, it's not on right. <laughs> now I've gotten paranoid. Anyway, we are thrilled to have Kathy Comer kick off what we are calling Crafty Creations at the library. We hope to make, I guess, I hesitate to use the word club because that sounds like it's kind of exclusive or something like that. But anyway, we are trying to see um, how many people we can get out in the evenings. And we may even do some during the days later on. Um, we just want to see the interest of how many of you are interested in learning things. And so I've given you all a flyer of upcoming events. What we've tried to do is schedule one a month um, through December. And uh, some of them will be taught by library staff members. Most of them will be taught by our patrons. Um, so if any of you have a talent that you would like to share, see me. I would love to have you share your talent with other people. Um, but anyway, uh, you have it. Uh, most of them you don't have to register for. We are attempting to offer things that will be at no cost to the participants. Now, if we get into something that gets more expensive, we may have to eventually offer a cost. But now we're trying to do something that's free uh, to, the participant, to the participants. And um, as I said, uh, sometimes there are a few that we're going to have to buy supplies or materials for, and so those are the ones you will have to register. So I boo-booed in saying this class needed registration because we didn't have to buy a thing. I just had to talk Kathy into coming and sharing her talent. So it is my distinct pleasure to offer you <laughs> Kathy Coomer, who is the queen of everything that is unique and wonderful, and the Yellow Juke. So and Kathy, thank you so much Duke. for coming. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Gotta remember the yellow juice. I'm not as quite I'm not quite as planned as I would like to be. And so I apologize for that. And I've got a lot of information that I'm not gonna be able to go over a whole lot. Somebody said you had a, someone had a notebook. So if you've got any questions as I go, let me know. I'll be glad to try to answer them. I was telling others that uh, I began this journey when their daughter Rebecca went to Virginia Tech and her roommate moved off with all the furniture when she got married because it's hers. <laughs> and we had to have furniture. So I bought things at auction, at yard sale. If it could be painted, it went home with us. We bought her new things that were upholstered, but pretty much everything else, wouldn't you say? was a piece of junk. <laughs> the idea for me is to take something that's junk and make it pretty. And when I was at Covington High School, I decorated for prom for years. <laughs> we built yeah. the most wonderful castle out of junk. Just paper tubes, uh, old flowers, all kinds of stuff like that. And, and we always built things for the prom at a fraction of what it would have cost had we bought kits and covered a greater expanse. So what I'm going to talk to you today is about the craziness that I do. And remember that if this is something you enjoy doing, it is art. And if I do a chair, I flip it upside down when I'm through and I staple a piece of cloth fabric on it, and I'm telling you a secret right now. I write on it, functional art, by Kate. Now, if you went to the Salvation Army and you got one of my chairs and you flipped it up and said, functional art by Kate, you wouldn't have a clue who it is, would you? Unless I told you. <laughs> right? You'd say, who did this? I buy stuff at the Salvation Army all the time. I don't want my name on the stuff that ends up back there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because nothing comes in my house until it's been cleaned and it's ready to use. So I flipped it over. It said, Classic Henry Don. Well, you know who designed Classic Henry Don? Right, the architect. Oh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, my goodness. Designed for Classic uh, Henry Don. Oh. Great lines. How could it miss? 
If you can't use it, don't take it home. Because chances are nobody's going to love exactly what you love. So don't buy something because you want to fix it up and sell it and make a fortune. It isn't going to happen. <laughs> I do things because I like to do them. One table I just took to the Salvation Army. Dagny took to the Salvation Army for me. It was, it's a gay leg. And when Ava and her cousin Lucas were little, they would say, I'm finished, can I be excused? And their parents would say, no. So I bought this gate leg table, painted, painted the undergirdings, because it was nasty, cleaned it all up, painted the undergirdings, painted the top with chalkboard paint. We had dinner and a piece of chalk. Because if you couldn't be excused, at least you could have fun at Granny's house. All greens go together. Did you know that? Yes. There are no greens that you can put together that won't clash. Every grain goes together and all you have to do is look at nature to realize that's true. Mm -hmm. If there's an appointment and I have to wait, if there's something going on and I can't get up and move around a whole lot, I take my coloring book with me. I've had it for years and if you look through this you would find not very many pages are colored. It takes a long time. But you learn from doing things like this, which reminds me that if you go to the Salvation Army, my favorite place in the whole world, if you go to the Salvation Army and you find a piece of art that you really, really like, but it's faded, get yourself some markers or paints and repaint it. Actually color it so that those colors are coming back. Or if it's a color that you don't like. Well, it's got too much yellow. I don't like that. Change it. I can guess where these came from. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite place. This is a frame, and it already had the picture in it. And I don't know what I'm going to put in it, but this picture will come out, and I'll put something else in it. The frame was in pretty good shape with the exception of some scratch marks at the top and I healed those with a little bit of paint. Just put a little bit of paint in it, rub it around with your finger, wipe it off because all you want is the paint and the scratch. The mat looks terrible. It's got mold or mildew or somebody drew on it or it's just plain old dirty. I take my mats out and I lay them on a tarp and I spray them. Now they don't always get this. Sometimes I do a color. That's, it's a matter of taste. Little sponge, break it off, if that's what you want to do, and you'll see all these little holes in it. And don't wet it, because if you wet it, it gets too soft and you'll pick up too much paint. So what you're going to do, put a little bit of paint on a little board or a plastic uh, plate, put a little bit of blue, put a little bit of yellow, Put a little bit of the greens that you've got. I would leave out the black because it will deepen them too much. But you dip this dry sponge in it, just dip it in, and kind of wipe off any excess, and you stamp it just as if you were using a stencil. So I've got my blue on here, and I'm going to, and I'm going to put blue on first because what color are the shadows? Blue. So you do the blue first. Then you pick up a little bit of yellow while it's still wet. Because what happens if you put two wet things together? They're going to blend. And what are they going to blend to? Green. Green. So you pick up that little bit of yellow and you go And it doesn't matter you keep using the same sponge because you want your colors to blend. And then you do your greens. And the last color you do is the white or the bright yellow because those are going to be your highlights that come down from the sky, from the sun. So you determine where the sun's going to hit and that's where you're going to put in your bright yellows and your whites. And it's just like flowers. You know, every garden should have white flowers. Did you know that? So you can see them at night. Plus, the white will make the color of a red flower brighter. 
it'll make the color of a yellow flower brighter because it contrasts. So you always want white in your garden. But like I say, art is in the eye of the beholder. And you can get great art out of trash. Do you know how to cover the seat of a chair? That is one of the best things to know. Um, someone said to me one time, I don't know what I'm going to do about the chair covers. They look awful. And my husband hadn't gotten around to doing it. I said, I'll show you how. You can guess where this one came from, too. Shower curtain. Shower curtain. Shower curtain. These are really handy dandy things. And now they make them in so many colors. But what I pick up that isn't mine and isn't new gets washed. So you always remember to wash. Some things go to the garage. And I set off a bug bomb. <laughs> because I don't know how you feel about bugs, but that gone, I hate them. I cover a piece of furniture. And I have a friend who's more brave, who is braver than I. <clears throat> and she she'll recover anything. Give her glue and a staple gun and I tell you what, that she can just do anything. I hope I put the staple gun back in here because it doesn't feel quite very heavy. If you don't have tools, get it. <coughs> so this is a staple gun. It has a safety on it so I don't get shot too much. Never had to get shot. <laughs> to tell the truth. But you want to lay your fabric out. And I never cut mine until I'm ready. Because it's kind of like the carpenter story, measure twice, cut once. Well, I'm not the greatest measurer in the world. So I would start on an edge, bring it up, and I didn't plug this in, and I would staple it. And that's gonna secure it here. Then I'm gonna bring my fabric up this way, and I'm going to pull it and stretch it so it's taut. And at this point, I'm going to cut it because I know how much fabric I need on this side. I can trim it up a little more if I need to later. But for now, I'm just going to cut it off. And I'm going to staple it in the middle. I've made it taut. It's going to pull across. Then I'm going to do this side. I didn't get that far enough, did I? And this side. And at that point, the fabric is cut. Then it's just a matter of playing with it. So on this particular chair, you might have to turn it backwards and bring it up and just kind of shuffle it around until you get it the way you want to. And you staple it in place. So you're going to work all the way around your cushion. And that's what you're going to do. So a dining room chair, you're going to need a screwdriver to take the cushion off. It's a good idea to put those screws where you know they are. And the best place to put them is on the piece of furniture that you're working with. So if you bind those screws up with a piece of tape and tape them on the furniture, you know where they are, and you're not going to lose them. Because going back and trying to find the right size screws, when you've lost all four of them, that's not an easy, that's not an easy thing. But just covering, just covering seat cushions can make a huge difference. Now this is an old, this is an old stool. The fabric on it was brown and it has little flowers in it. I took it out yesterday and I spray painted it. I spray painted not only the legs, but I spray painted the top. If you're going to use something like this on a porch, Walmart sells vinyl that you can lay over top of the table. It's a real thick, heavy vinyl. Just measure how much you need. Put it on other fabric stores. I feel certain have it as well. 
and staple it on right over top of your fabric. And then you've got an exterior piece of furniture. I could, I could leave this outside and it would be fine if I put mine on. Um, as far as the legs are concerned, like I say, I didn't finish. I, did, I ran out of time. I painted the legs white, did it with spray paint, put a little turquoise on it. If I were doing this for real, I would paint the legs white again. Because when I sand, I want three colors to come through. The first color is going to be the white. Well, the first color is going to be the color of the wood. And I sanded this. I used my sander on this. You need to have a sander. You got to have a sander. It's easier than doing it by hand. I've done it both ways, trust me. You plug it in, you got it sanded. It's a done deal. I would have painted this white again. And then when I sanded, there would be blue, there would be white, a little bit of blue, and then the brown. It would appear as though, over time, this had been painted many times. It would have that old look. And then I would put a clear polyurethane on it to protect it. But we really don't care whether we protect something that's already terribly distressed, right? What can happen? Somebody drops it and they knock some of the paint off? Well, I've already knocked the paint off. So that's, that's a possibility. However, if you've got a decent piece of furniture and it's got a few scratches in it, some dings, shoe polish works a wonder. If you just use that paste shoe polish, and put it on like you're gonna uh, spit polish boots. I remember those days. You put it on and you buff it. And that helps a lot. Now there are some things that are too damaged. And if it's a good piece of furniture and you wanna keep it that color, you wanna keep it in its wood tones, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do some work and refinish that. And sometimes tops become damaged and they, they're going to have to be refinished and stain is going to have to be applied and polyurethane is going to have to go over top of that. Always let every coat dry as much as possible because spray paint anyway will bowl. We gather shells, I don't know about the rest of you, but we do. And I found the form at a yard sale so I decided I just hot glue them on, and I don't recommend that. Hot glue doesn't hold them real well, and if I pop these, they can come off. Uh, the uh, bow from the Dollar Tree, and don't discount the Dollar Tree, they have great stuff in there. But I used hot glue, and I should have used a glue like Goop, which will hold anything to anything forever. And I should have done that. Would anybody like to have this? <laughs> Styrofoam box. These are great things for kids. Ava decorated this one. And as I told you, she did it with uh, poster paint. And she didn't go back yet and do the fine work. But I've got a feeling she probably will. So she used the search for things she didn't want to lose. And so she puts them in here. We have used these for art supplies. We've used them in my studio for things that she's working on that we don't want to misplace. So she painted this. You give this to a child and say, go for it. Have fun. You don't want the Omaha steak shovel, right? So you cut a piece of cardboard or something heavy enough, put some uh, double face tape on and pop it in. And that's an easy fix. Then you can write on this whatever you choose. Children's art. Don't discount your children's art. Not only is it beautiful to look at, what does it say to the child who painted it? It says I am valuable. And what I've done is important. My mother-in-law was in the nursing home. I made lots and lots of these. They cost nothing. 
You cut the form out of a piece of cardboard. This happens to be an old piece of foam board. It was in my studio. It was a good size, so I cut it out. I don't like compasses. I usually put down two circles. You know, a lamp goes here and something else goes there, and that's the way I get my form. I cut it out of foam board. I didn't have I didn't have enough flowers. I went to uh, the Dollar Tree, my second favorite place, and I asked them if they would let me have. Well, I offered to pay for them first. The flowers that fall off, and they said, "Oh, we just give those away." There's a lady who comes in and gets them. I said, "If you have any right now, <laughs> could I have them?" So they gave them to me. Well, I got started, and you can see I'm. I don't always plan well. I didn't have enough flowers to go all the way around. Which goes back to the the idea, if you mess up, you back up and punt and do something else. Flowers were already on. I wasn't going to pull them off. So I had some ribbon, Dollar Tree ribbon, and I wrapped it around mm -hmm. and put them on. These are very lightweight, as you can imagine. You want to hold it? They're very lightweight. If you want to put them on a screen door, you just uh, put a pin, safety pin on the back. You can put them up like that. You can put these up with double face tape. And that's what I did at the nursing home. I made a whole pile of them. The men I got uh, American flags for. The women I made these for. Except I covered theirs completely in flowers. I was able to get enough, and gradually I got them on all the doors. Uh, I think with the fire code now, they probably wouldn't allow that. But at that time they did, and I put them up with double face tape. I brought a catalog, which I've never ordered from. It says on here, is this your last one? Well, it probably will be, because I'm not going to order anything. But it's got great ideas in it. And I saw this, and I wanted to share it with you, a couple of things. Old bicycle, it is coming out, <laughs> and it's going to be painted with this stuff called Fusion, and it says it's a hammer finish. I'm going to that. I think I got my trip to get some paint. But this is what I'm going to put on. I'm going to put it on the seat. I'm going to put it on the basket. It's got a banana seat. Does that tell you who's a what? <laughs> um, it's all going to be hammered metal. Will it hold a plant? Maybe. Will it just sit on the porch for the fall? Because after all, I have now that might want to take a midnight ride. I live in a country people can't see. <laughs> Crazy stuff that's in my yard. I have a mannequin. She's dressed. She has a hat. She has a beautiful wig. She doesn't have any hands, however, so she wears gloves all the time. She has a basket of flowers, not real ones, fake ones. Which reminds me to tell you, you can take real flowers and fake flowers and mix them together and make your bouquet look larger than it is and more substantial. And if somebody reaches over and touches it, maybe they'll hit a real one. <laughs> I buy books that have pretty pictures in them. This is one on Life in the mountains. I just happened to pick these up. You know where they came from. <laughs> this one is um, National Parks. This one I got in Washington State because you see, I don't just jump at home. <laughs> I jump wherever I go. Find yourself books with great pictures. And you've got instant art. You've got instant art. Look at that. This is Washington State. Look at that. Beautiful art. You don't have to go to the store and buy a frame that already has art in it. 
because it really doesn't reflect who you are. <laughs> Go to a junk store. <laughs> Buy yourself a book. Get you something that reflects who you are. I thank you for your kind of attention. I've gone over. And I do apologize for that. 